Good afternoon. Today we're going to be going over some of the problems from the Management 3710 Supply Chain uh, Midterm Exam that covers Chapter 10, 11, and 12. Note, I am not a professor. I'm a student, so take whatever I say with a grain of salt. However, this is how you would solve these problems. So, question 21. A diner uses an average of 283 pounds of butter every day, with a standard deviation of 94. The butter is ordered from a local supplier who delivers three days after the order is placed. What reorder point is needed to ensure a 95% cycle service level? Assume a continuous review inventory policy <clears throat> and round to the nearest whole number of pounds. Okay, so first of all, the question is asking for what reorder point at a certain cycle service level? So, what reorder point? When you see that, instantly, you need to be thinking of this formula. Reorder point is equal to safety stock plus demand times lead time. Now, fortunately, in the problem, they already tell us this part of the equation. So we can just list out that the demand is 283 LB per day. The lead time is how long it takes for that item th that butter to be delivered so it takes three days from when you put in the order to when you receive it so we have that part of the problem done so now we can rewrite that problem out to be safety stock plus 283 times three which comes out as rop equals safety stock plus 849 so now this is the part that we're trying to find in the equation. Now in order to find the safety stock, there's two ways. First of all, you have to remember that this is a continuous review policy. Don't get that mixed up with periodic review because the formulas is here. The continuous review formula is like this. Periodic review formula is a little bit different. So make sure you're using the appropriate one. In this case, this is the formula we're using. So, safety stock is equal to Z cycle service level times standard deviation of lead time. And then standard deviation of lead time, which is this like circle with the L, then is here. This formula is listed here is equal to normal standard deviation multiplied by square root of lead time. Okay, so that's a lot to digest, but let's just go back to what we know first and what we can fill out. For the safety stock, this is Z of a cycle service level. Cycle service level is simply how our next reorder does not have a stock out. At what percentage chance that the shipment that comes in does not run out and in our case it's 95 percent so by using this information of 95 percent we have to go to a z-score table in order to find the z-score so on the z-score table you have this there's 50 percent here there's the 60 percent here 70 percent here and so on and so on However, here we're looking for 95%. So the closest thing to 95% is 0.9505. And we can take the number from 1.6 and 0.05 to give us 1.65. So our Z CSL equals 1.65. Now, the remaining part of the problem is this standard deviation of lead time. So going back to the formula that we have here for the standard deviation of lead time, we can plug in this information that's already given to us. The standard deviation is 94. Lead time is three days. So if we do the math on that, which I already done, it's 94 times SQRT of three is equal to 162.81 and this is the standard deviation of lead time now 
we take this number, copy it back here, multiply it by here, and remember, by doing this, we get the safety stock now. So when we do that math, we end up with the result that the safety stock is 268.63. Now for a lot of people, they finish here. However, the problem is not done yet. This is just the safety stock. Remember, we're trying to find the reorder point. So we need to take the safety stock that we already got and plug it back into this original equation. So now we know that ROP is equal to 268.63 plus 849. And if we do the math on that, which I'll show you, the result is 1,117. And there's a margin of error plus of minus one, just for calculation's sake, due to the decimal points. But anyways, this is how you get this correct answer. Question number 22 now. A janitorial supply company uses 152 rolls of toilet paper per day. After switching suppliers for toilet paper, the company changes its replenishment quantity to 592 cases per order to take advantage of an all unit quantity discount. The replenishment quantity with the previous supplier was 256 cases. How much does this change increases the average inventory of toilet paper as measured in cases. Use the following assumptions. Fixed order quantity, the safety stock remains the same, and we round to the nearest case. Okay, what is the question asking? So the question is asking for the change in average inventory. So essentially, we're looking for old average inventory and new average inventory, and then the difference between them. So Let's write out what the average inventory formula is first. The average inventory formula is cycle inventory plus safety stock. Now, fortunately for us, the amount of safety stock remains the same. So basically, we can ignore this part of the problem already because it will remain the same. It will not have an impact on the difference in um, average inventory. So we're only looking for cycle inventory in that case. In that case, cycle inventory is Q divided by 2. Now, what is our quantity? Our quantity for the new supplier is, is 592 cases per order. Now, you have to double check in the problem whether or not they're looking for cases or they're looking for rolls of toilet paper. This is one of the catches here. You don't want to multiply and do extra math for no reason. We're looking exclusively at cases per order. So our Q is 592. Now our quantity for the old supplier is given, which is 256. Now, if we do the math on that, 592 minus 256, this is the difference in quantity from the new supplier to the old supplier. The answer would come out to be 336. Now, remember, we're not done yet. This is the quantity. We're trying to find the cycle inventory. So we need to plug that back in. 336 divided by 2 following the cycle inventory formula. And that comes out a result of 168, which is right here. So don't make the errors that I made. So going to question 24, because it's a little bit more relatable to the previous question. A coffee shop uses an average of 636 paper cups per week, which are replenished every time the inventory drops to 3,302. If the coffee shop uses a fixed order quantity of eight cases and there are 1,000 cups per case, the lead time is two weeks. What is the average total inventory of cups? So like before, we're looking for average total inventory, not cycle inventory. So average total, I'm just gonna write that so it's more clear, is cycle inventory plus safety stock. In this case, safety stock is not given to us, so we need to solve for all these variables. So first, let's look at safety stock. Remember the safety stock formula. The safety stock formula is ROP, which is the reorder point, minus demand times lead time. 
in our case, ROP, which is the reorder point, is every time it drops to 3,302, 3, we reorder. So there we go. The demand is 636 paper cups per week. So 636. Then the lead time is two weeks. So just two. And then now we can plug in the information to find the safety stock, which will give us half of the answer. So safety stock is equal to 3,302 minus 636 times two. So 636 times two, that's 1272 minus 1272, and we get 2,030. Safety stock is equal to 2,030. So now we have this half of the problem done. Remember, we're looking for average total inventory. So having the safety stock, which is like the backup, is not enough. Now we need to find the cycle inventory. Remember from before, cycle inventory formula is Q divided by two. So what is our quantity in this case? Eight times 1,000. So like I said before, you have to be careful with what they're asking for. They're asking for cups here. They're not asking for case. So that's the trick they're trying to get you at. So make sure that you don't fall for that and you do that eight, the quantity is equal to eight times 1,000. Remember, they're asking for cups, not for cases. So the answer there would be 8,000. Remember, you're not done yet. You have to divide that by two. So when you divide that by two, you get 4,000. Now the last part, let's put that together. So remember the safety stock formula we got, we got 2,030. Then we have Q equals 4,000. When you add 4,000 together with 2030, you get 6030, which is the correct answer here. Now we can go back to question number 23. Question 23 asks, demand for a transitor used in assembling walkie-talkies average 288 per week. If the replenishment lead time is three weeks, the replenishment quantity is 32,156 units. What reorder point is needed to ensure a safety, average safety inventory of 522 units? Use the following assumptions of continuous review and as well as rounding to the nearest unit. What is the problem asking for? The problem is asking for reorder point to get this safety inventory. So this is our safety stock, we know that. But remember, write out this formula first. Whenever you see safety stock or reorder point, the formula is, re well, the original formula is reorder point minus demand times lead time. Now, when we flip it to find the reorder point, we get safety stock plus demand times lead time. So let's fill that out. Our safety stock in this case we're trying to get is 522. The demand we're trying to get here is 288 per week. So we can plug that in 288 times the lead time of three weeks. Some note with the lead time, whatever metric that they give you, just follow their metric. If it's three weeks, it's three weeks. Don't try to make it 21 days. That will throw the equation off. So with this, we get a reorder point of 288 times three plus 522 to get the answer of 1386, which is the correct answer. So 1386, there we go. That's how you do question number 23. Question 25, it says prefab uses 26,568 square feet of plywood per month. Inbound shipping is via truck at a cost of $432 per order, independent of the quantity that's ordered. The manufacturer charges 97 cents per square foot. If prefab holding cost is 22% per year, what replenishment quantity would minimize the annual cost? So we use economic order quantity model. We round to the nearest square foot, 12 months in a year, and 100 cents in a dollar. Okay, what is the question asking for? The question is asking for replenishment quantity. Now, you, you might automatically think reorder point, which I've told you to. However, the next part here is that it tells you to use the EOQ model. Now, 
by using this EOQ formula of EOQ is equal to the square root of two times demand times setup cost over big H. Remember, this is setup cost and this is holding cost, not holding percentage or shipping cost. So with the information that's given, let's plug out what we know first. The demand is 26,568 per month. So 26,568 per month. However, in the problem, they were asking for the annual cost. So we need to know the annual demand as well. So obviously multiply by the amount of months in a year, 12, 26, 5, 6, 8 times 12 to get 318816 for the annual demand. Now, the setup cost is always consistent, $432. And it says regardless of what quantity we get, it's 432 Remember, S is for setup cost, not shipping cost. H is not given, although you may see it's 22%. That's actually little h. Little h is the percentage, 22%. However, we need to get big H. In order to do that, we need to do 0.22 times the charged amount, which is 97% per square foot, to get big H of... 0.2134. Now we can set up the problem. This is the square root of 2 times 38816 times the setup of 432 divided by 0.2134. Uh, due to the limited technology here, I'm going to solve that on a calculator and come back with the answer. So after plugging all of this in at once in a calculator, the result ends up being 35,928. You can plug that in yourself. Unfortunately, the Mac can't do that. So that's all I can show you. But that's how you answer the written problem from the midterm. Hopefully that helped and you don't make the same mistakes that I do. And yeah, make sure that you actually practice these problems yourself. Watching me do it is not sufficient. So anyways, good luck on the exam, guys, and take care.